Okay, it's time for our responsive reading, Beacon Church. This is a weekly practice that we do corporately together as a church to um, consider and declare together uh, the truths that unite us as believers in Christ. For the question and answer format that we use, uh, we've been using the material and content of New City Catechism. We do not hold the content of New City Catechism to be authoritative, but we, uh, we use it to point us to God's word, which we do believe is authoritative. Last week, our responsive reading question was, what is the Lord's Prayer? And this week, we're moving on to God's word. The question is, how is the word of God to be read and heard? In Genesis 1, God creates the whole universe by his word. He said, let there be light. And there was light. In Genesis 2, he commands man not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In Genesis 3, disaster. In Genesis 4, God warns Cain to rule over his sin. God urges him to do rightly and be accepted. But by Genesis 6, verse 5, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Has the human heart changed? It goes on. God preserves one upright family through the flood. He raises up a nation through Abraham, preserves this nation, and delivers them from oppression with impressive miracles that they all witnessed. He gave them his commandments written in stone, He gave them a leader and a priest to teach them. He told them to bind his word on their wrists and their foreheads so they would not forget it. Maybe this time his word would be received rightly and obeyed. No, the human condition had not changed. Judges 21, 25, in those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Is there any hope for any of us, for the human race? Could our sin nature possibly triumph over God's word? Are we too stubborn for God to change us? No, we have the hope of the new covenant. Jeremiah 31, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So God planned that he would intervene. He would write his law on our hearts. And according to John 10, 27, his people will know his voice and follow him. The verse says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. God's word is the only word that is always true, never changing, all powerful. Created the whole universe by it. He graciously makes his word known to us for our benefit. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 say, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We also see that it's not natural for humans to listen and obey God's word. According to Romans 3, no one seeks God. We use our tongues to deceive. Our words are used deceitfully. In our paths are ruin and misery. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 to 20. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So while God's people recognize God's voice, we still have our sin nature to battle and contend with. We still have the limitations of our bodies and our minds. It takes work to learn and understand God's word. 2 Timothy 2.15 Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. In 2 Peter 3.16 There are some things in them, he's talking about Paul's writings, that are hard to understand which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. 
It also takes humility to listen to God's word. Otherwise, we exalt our own ideas above God's word and twist it to suit our own preference. It also takes humility to ask for wisdom whenever we find ourselves lacking. According to James 1.5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. We see from God's word that his people recognize his word, but it is not always easy to read, understand, and follow because of our sin nature. That is why we need to prepare ourselves to receive his word. We need to be diligent, like the approved workmen in 2 Timothy. We need to prepare ourselves in prayer, as instructed in James chapter 1. So I'll read the question, and I invite you to join me in responding. How is the word of God to be read and heard? with diligence, preparation, and prayer, so that we may accept it with faith, store it in our hearts, and practice it in our lives. <clears throat> Let's pray. Lord, soften our hearts toward your word today. Spirit, give us humble hearts, that we would receive the scriptures joyfully and with a good attitude. May we not esteem our own words above yours, Lord, Give us clarity of thinking to understand your word. Give us courage and faith to be doers of your word, not just hearers. Thank you that we have the freedom to possess written copies of your scriptures today in our country. What a blessing. Thank you for Joe's hard work in studying, preparing, and teaching each week. I pray that even this afternoon, we would be attentive to what you say to us, that you would be glorified as we know you and love you more. Amen.